Modi. Modi. Yeah. What did I say? Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Ashok Modi is going to be covering Drupal 7 and entities, which is not just fields and not just nodes, but now the generalization of something in Drupal that will be stored. Is that? That's pretty much spot on. All right. I'm totally killing it. He's going to do a better job at this. Let's all give him a warm up. Thank you. Uh, let's get to it. So uh, tonight's agenda is, uh, well, who we are, what are entities, uh, how we're going to make all of this, uh, how all of this works and how we work with it. And then Eric is going to be doing a demo at the end and um, we'll have a Q&A session. And uh, my name's Ashok, but if that's really hard to say, then you can say BT Mash. And there's no relevance to anything, but I'm from Canada. And uh, um, I'm just trying to learn more about the core of Drupal 7. And Eric, my co-presenter, is a technical consultant at Acquia. And um, so if you saw my presentation last week, uh, best practices and sort of repeatable patterns are one of my big interest points. Um, a lot, actually, what I'm out here doing this week and last week is all performance tuning and architectural stuff, getting press flow in, working with varnish and memcache and all that stuff. Um, and part of my interest in entity is I'm working on entitlements API, which is sort of my answer to an authorization framework within Drupal that I don't think really exists out there. So that's sort of what brought me into needing to learn entity right now. And. Uh... We just wanted to give uh, credits to uh, two people that have gone forth and talked about and documented some of what the a what the entities API is, and uh, the first one is Wolfgang Siegler, and you can visit his site at wolfgangsiegler.net, and he's also the maintainer of the entity API, which is not the same thing as what which is not exactly the same thing as what entities is in Drupal, but it does complete what entities should do and Ronald Ashri, who uh, has done an extensive write-up on entities at the, uh, at the uh, shortened URL that I've provided. So what are entities? Well, till the end of Drupal 6, you could consider nodes as the main abstraction point. I mean, we had CCK, so you could add fields, and it had versioning, and you could have translations for the different pieces of content that you had, and the list goes on, voting, so on and so forth. And there was a big discussion that popped up, and I believe it was, it was by Robert Douglas, who asked, why not make everything a node? So why can't users be a node, comments, everything? And people did try to do just that. So we had content profiles, we had a comment as, as nodes module, there's even a taxonomy nodes module. And, I mean, people try to merit, you know, what's, what's good about having everything as a node versus what's not so good. And ultimately, this led into what are now entities. And ultimately, entities are just a type of object or data which Drupal is aware of. So it's a way to describe to the rest of Drupal um, something that's relevant and unique, but it's not necessarily a node. Um, you can consider it the new node, so to speak. And most types of data in Drupal core are now entities. So nodes are a type of entity. Comments are a type of entity. Same with taxonomy terms and files and users. And you can package up all of the contents of what define an entity, such as fields, and you would create what's called a bundle. So uh, an example of this would be a article node. That's, that's not just a node, it's a bundle. And it's, the entity type is node, but it's called an article. And as I mentioned, all of the above can have fields, and they can be altered at various stages. They don't necessarily have to have a field, but that flexibility is there for it to have them. And Currently, Drupal core already has a few modules that uh, utilize entities. 
Uh, Eric will demo some of his work on the Entitlements API along with another example module on uh, ways that you can use entities. But other than that, Rules module now extensively uses entities to store all the configurations that you make. And uh, the media module, it treats all media as entities. And here I've provided an example of what the media module now looks like. So now you have an image, but along with it, you have a checkbox on whether or not it's a dog. And you can specify what kind of breed this is. Now it's just metadata that's associated with a file. The file is not actually a dog. And um, <laughs> the main reason for all of this is, um, well, when do you define your entities? Well, you want to define entities when you want to not use a node. So users can have fields, but they're not necessarily a piece of content that people um, go to on the site. So, or, you know, you could have something even smaller, like you could have some sort of posted type of content. And that doesn't necessarily need to have versioning or translations or this other set of functionality that a full-blown node might. But you can still attach fields to it. You can expand on what this new thing would do. And, you know, you can make, power, you can make use of the entity field query so you can grab different pieces of data as you want it. And um, just to give an example, now Drupal Commerce is using entities to define line items for purchases. Now, under other circumstances with the way they define things and having fields and other portions associated with it, it would have been a node. Well, with Drupal 7, it's now an entity. And it's not a full-blown piece of content. But currently, it is a little bit difficult for non-developers because there is no real UI like how you had in CCK to be able to create a new and completely different type of entity. And you need to write code to be able to do all of this. But uh, once Eric gets into his presentation, you might be able to see that it's not that difficult. It's not new. If you ever wrote content types in Drupal 6 and dealt with all of CCK's hooks and trying to manage all that, it's much, much simpler in Drupal 7. So a lot of the same sort of purpose code is there, but it's not, it's not nearly as complicated. Yeah. And um, if you're defining a new entity, well, it looks really similar to the way the hooks for nodes did. So we had hook node info, we have hook, hook entity info hook node load, entity load. And similarly, then we have pre-save, insert, update, delete, and so on and so forth. They're both very similar in terms of the kind of hooks that you define. So if you're used to dealing with the node API and everything that goes with it, it shouldn't be that difficult. And uh, I'm sure Eric will go into it in more detail. Um, but a hook entity info is similar to what a hook, what hook node info would be. And it's just defining what your entity will have, uh, such as a label, what kind of controller, which is uh, what will allow you to change um, different pieces of information regarding it. If there are any um, bundles that are associated with it, as an example for user, if you look at its uh, entity info information, it shows user as a bundle. It's as simple as that. Yes. So the, the best analog to bundles is content types in Drupal 6. So node is an entity, but then article, page, all those are bundles. What? They could also just be a field group. A bundle is essentially a type of that one entity. So it's, it's actually like bundling a whole set of settings underneath that node, or underneath that entity. Right. But, but if you wanted to there's there's a whole discussion on how easy it is to implement sub entities um, that's not something I looked into but that's 
it doesn't quite fit under bundles, um, but if you look, if you search for like sub entities on D.O, it'll, it's kind of a separate conversation. And then as we move on into the entity field query, it's, it's simply an API for querying the entities that are there. So you can, you can query on entity properties and fields. Uh, you can su it supports queries across multiple types of entities. So now you could have a, you could have fields within bundles that are shared between a node and a user, as an example. And it supports querying that same type of field against both of them. And uh, you can also, it also uh, covers properties in the low, in the database and querying fields in, in storage. And there's hook entity query alter, which allows you to alter these queries that are coming in as well. So much like, you know, DB query alter, that's there. This is, I think, the biggest gain from going in entity is now that we have a standard set of how structures represented, we can actually query them independent of how they're stored or where they're stored or what created them. Um, so if, I mean, I'll show an example of this, but I think if you have any doubt about entity, you'll see this and it'll kind of, you'll never write your own data structure again. It'll all be entities. So, you know, we're talking about entities and what is this new structure like? So we have entities and what consists of entities are fields. Uh, or sorry, you have fields, and they're just a data type that can be attached to any kind of entity and shared, and you can share it between them. And they can have different widgets and formatters. It's, it's basically CCK, but now it has its own field API and it can be attached to anything. And then field instances are any fields that are attached to a particular entity. And when you have a whole bunch of different fields together for a particular entity and configured in a particular way, you have a bundle. So node types, as Eric had mentioned, uh, taxonomy vocabularies, uh, they're all bundles now. And users are kind of both at this point because a user is an entity and it's defining a bundle called user as well. But you could have another bundle for a user called king or peon or whatever you want. And when you want to have these pieces fit together, um, this is just an example of an install of what might be the, uh, what happens in an install file. First you just define, you know, the basic settings of what this new node type is. Uh, you give it some defaults and node add body field adds a body field to this content type right at that point. And then you just do node type save to be able to save that content type into the database. And right at that point you basically have the beginnings of a bundle. Then you can do field create field, and you provide information regarding a field. So you define that it's it's a field that's uh, a, that's a text uh, it's a text field, and it's going to be attached to this particular bundle in that case. And then we get into the field API, and the field API lets you define different types of fields at that point. Um, like I, like I mentioned already, text is one type of field, numbers are another type, list, those are all things that are already included as a part of the field module in Drupal core. Uh, link is one that someone has written outside of Drupal core. And I don't know if you have any. References, um, well, basically most of CCK got moved into core, but some got left out and they're still out there. Um, so I think, References, which is the new project that includes node and user references, and link are probably the <coughs> two most familiar examples. Right. And for all of these, if you look at the examples module, or yeah, I guess the examples module at drupal.org slash project slash examples, it shows you on how to implement uh, all of the stuff within it. And now we just get into a code and demo. So I think with a topic like this, it's so developer heavy. Um, I think it'll help sink in just by looking at and walking through some of the uh, some of the parts of the API that are actually relevant. 
Um, does anyone have any general questions first um, about? So in Drupal 6, you had a node ID and like version ID and ID and IDs. Does that mean that now with entities, it's an EID? No, it's, it's the, the actual ID name depends on what your entity name is. You can call it whatever you want. So there's just some arbitrary ID, and then you can also have versioning also. So those that same system is still there. Is it possible to build rather complex structures and make them appeal? Like field of fields? Yeah, I mean, you can... You can group fields together and store them because it's all flexible. Um, but can for, I have a group of field groups? That's basically what he was asking. Is it's, it's kind of a different, having entities as a field of another entity is, it's not a like straightforward, you just attach it as node. Um, but it's, like I said, it's just kind of a different, it's not as simple as a field, it's not as simple as an entity. So. Um, there's also a module called relations that someone's working on that lets you define for relationships between different entities. And I'd imagine that someone might be able to basically reference a particular type of entity within the scope of a larger or of another entity, and you would have that kind of behavior occurring then. Those are in these comments are in the files that are in the files. You have nodes that have comments and files as properties of the nodes, right? So they're connected to the nodes, they're not actually properties. They're, they're not, so it's not like a sub entity. No. There, there's a mapping between the two. It's not a it's it's not necessarily a hierarchy, it's the comments live over here and they're they connect to a particular node. At least that's how it's stored. Obviously, functionally, it's more like what you described. Um, there's a, a Drupal 6 project. How will this affect an upgrade, essentially? So, In what type of project? In what way do you mean? Uh, it's actually a sort of a social network. So, in so in this, buried in the CCK issue queue is an issue on migrating from CCK fields into the core field system. Um, they have, I think they have everything worked out except for references and I think file fields, something like that. Um, so that's actually, migrating between the two is going to just depend on whatever functionality there is to actually move the data. This is more from the perspective of kind of starting from scratch, starting over. Um, I'm not, I don't know, I don't have a link to it off the top of my head, but um, most of what you've done in CCK, you can migrate fairly easily into this whole system. I was just going to say, you know, this is a very fundamental change. So if you if you have written a lot of custom code and have an application that has 47 custom modules and it's working great in Drupal 6, you probably want to take your sweet time migrating it because it's not going to be easy. Although somebody, uh, um, what's his name, Jimmy, uh, wrote a uh, module that converts your module to Drupal 7. Uh, it, it's great, but it's more of an amusement than a practical <laughs> Uh, the thing is that, you know, we did, you know, we did something, I think the Drupal community did something that had to be done. They gener generalized, uh, generalized what were nodes and users into one, into entities. And this all, you know, really makes sense. It's not object oriented, but it, it, it shares some, some of the virtues of object orientation and the sort of entities sort of like that. Uh, but it really allows you to do, it, it, it just allows you to make more sense. You know, because Drupal 1 was a block. I mean, Drupal 7 is this, and God knows what Drupal, we're now talking, everyone's talking about what Drupal 8 is. We don't know yet. Um, 
Uh, is there a core set of properties that are the same that you're for? That's okay. I'll, I'll go into that. <laughs> yeah, once you start talking about inheritance, then, then you're, you're merging too much into object orientation. Yeah, and, and that's an important thing is what I'm going to cover is the very sort of basic idea of this is all of what entities are. I'm not going to cover fields. I'll kind of point you to where that next step is, but it's such a big topic in its own that you really have to understand how entities all work together and where that really foundation of everything is before you can even get to fields and understand how that works. So um, I think that's... That's easily a topic for a whole other presentation, so I won't be going into that too much. Um, so, like I said, let's let's step through some of the some of the really common pieces of the Entity API. Um, I do want to reemphasize: there's an Entity API contrib module, which is somewhat unrelated to this. So, it's probably going to be hard to kind of search and differentiate between the two, but they are separate. So if you see it in the contrib world, it's not an exact analog to what this is. Which one? Entity API. Oh, it's in the world. Yeah. It, it basically brings the whole like CRUD object-oriented part to Entity API. So it's sort of a superset of what this provides. Um, so like Ashok mentioned, um, hook Entity Info is sort of where you get started with everything. Um, I think sort of the really in important parts to point out here are the controller class is essentially a way for you to define custom actions for your entity. So by default, the default, the Drupal entity controller, Drupal default entity controller uh, class basically provides load, create, um, cache, you know, sort of really basic high level operations. You can actually extend that and add your own save, delete, create, even more mo even more functions associated with it. Um, in my case, I didn't do that because, again, I wanted to keep it as strict as possible. So uh, that's something you, you can look at the documentation of how, um, for instance, the node entity controller class extends it. So that would be a great example to look for. Um, one nice thing is there's actually a static cache for all entities unless you turn it off. So if you load an entity once on a page load, it'll be sitting there in memory the next time you load it. Um, so I actually mentioned this last week, but this is part of the core entity. So because everything's using the same API, you're getting the same benefit for everything across the board. Um, similarly, fields are also cached. These are actually persistently cached, so it's actually stored in an even more um, high-performance way. But again, now that we have a foundation for everything to build off of, we all get common benefits. A um, couple other nice features in here. Um, you can actually give it a specific URI callback. So for any entity, that particular type, you can generate a URL for it. So in node's case, it's always node slash node ID. If you have some other structure, in my case, it's only an administrative entity, so it's admin slash people something. Um, so this allows you to sort of automatically create that URI in one place. Um, there's a fieldable property, and you know it's, it's hard to say it enough, but with everything together, you basically turn on fields for an entity and you're most of the way there to attaching fields to it. So essentially fields and entity are these two separate bodies, but by setting fieldable on an entity, you're kind of opening up that possibility. Um, I think someone mentioned the NIDs over there. Um, you can actually define what that ID is. So whether it's a numeric ID, or in my case, I used a machine name, it doesn't matter, just some sort of primary identifier. And it has built-in load functions that look for that. Um, it has built-in revisioning. So in the case of nodes, you can, obviously there's revisioning just like in Drupal 6 and prior. Um, but you can revision your nodes as well using the same sort of VID idea. Um, and you can list your your bundles, again, I'm not going to go into that too much, but 
that's all defined within this one hook. So you tell it what all these different bundles are inside of it. Uh, there's a hook entity info alter, so you can add more bundles after the fact. Um, so none of this is sort of set in stone where it is. Is there a, a way to make machine names obvious? Like, like the phone or the actual? Well, the ID that you give it, it doesn't care whether it's a number or a string. Oh, it's just. Know, it's like yeah. Well, I mean, it, that's what I mean. In the entity sense, it it's a different issue entirely. Um, I mean, in all tables, typically there's nowadays there's a machine name and a number anyway, so it, you can load it either way. Um, and view modes is the new um, display modes, or what was it in Drupal 6? What? Sort of. So in Drupal 6, when you went into teaser and full and all RSS, those are now called view modes. Um, so you can actually add, um, you can add new ones, you can as many as you want, all by just adding to this array. So in, in Drupal 6, it was awful to just add one more. Um, but in this case, it's really simple. And if you look on, um, Bang Pound actually gave a demo at Florida Drupal Camp on adding this for like a thumbnail view mode, I think. So if you look him up on GitHub, he has a full example of how to do it, just the view mode part of this. If you add it to the node entity. Okay. Yeah. So it'll add to all the bundles of that entity. So um, basically what that means is like instead of just having full and teaser, you could have full teaser and like idle list and for the idle list you might for an event have the little date included with the idle and for other kind of events you have little. Yeah. And basically what happens when you set these is it just adds another tab up there and you go and configure the fields. You don't this basically just makes this available to the UI. You don't have to do any of the configuration yourself. No. It has to be a part of the bundle you're actually working on. It's all, it's whatever's contained within that one entity. You can't go Unless the field is doing it. There's the module that I would mentioned, the relations module, is working on just that, oh, yeah. that piece. Yeah. So once they get it right, you will be able to have relationships between entities. Yeah. Like instead of the hard-coded thing that's there right now between nodes and columns and nodes and files. So you'll be able to have real relationships. So, to speak. so that's how you get them started. Um, Entity field query, I'll go through examples of all this later. Um, entity field query is, I think it's really the, cool, again, the coolest part. Um, so by using this, let me see. Um, you no longer have to have any idea what the table structures look like of entities. If you ever had to write SQL queries to like search for CCK fields, it was, awful having to rewrite all those joins and doing all that. Um, entity field query completely erases all that work you had to do. So to sort of break it down, um, entity field query allows you to put in field conditions. So any of those fields you put in, if you've played with the new database engine, um, this adds the same sort of options for conditions. So you can give it a, a field, a value, a operator, so you can do minus less thans, greater thans, not equal to is all that um, for individual fields. Uh, you can also do it for properties. So in the case of if you have some sort of metadata associated with the field itself, you can also search on those. And you can even sort on entity, on properties of the entity itself. So whether it has fields, things like that, really, really low level options. Um, you can add pager queries, you can um, get just counts, just like anything you could do with a database, 
this is basically abstracting that up one more level so you don't have to worry about what's actually behind the scenes. So you could search across multiple entities, whether they're in MySQL or Mongo or a web service. It doesn't matter. You can search them all the exact same way. So those are the two really big building blocks. Um, entity load is probably the, the last main part of dealing with entities. So this is, if you've used node load, this probably looks fairly similar. Um, I love seeing these. To do, remove, and duplicate. Um, so essentially entity load is sort of an app, it's one level down from what a node load would be. So all you have to tell it is what type and an array of IDs, and it will go out and pull all that information together. Um, again, like it says, you don't, you shouldn't really use conditions here. You should use entity field query. So pretend that's not there. Um, so that I'll actually should, that'll be easiest to show an example of. So in my case, just to give you a little background, um, entitlements API is basically designed for a way for external services. So LDAP was actually sort of what I had in mind doing this, but any sort of identity management system could provide different mappings for Drupal to use so it can map it to roles or organic groups or any other structure within Drupal. Um, I have a working six version, but it's not exactly the cleanest uh, option. But so essentially it's just a list of arbitrary entitlements and mappings from external services. Um, so in my case, I actually have two different types of entities. I'm just going to make it bigger so you guys can actually read it. So, like I mentioned, we, we have a machine name for the entity, we have a label, um, we have a base table, which is what that entity load uses to get your information. Um, we have an ID, which is, again, what entity load uses to put that together. So it'll actually search that table for that ID and return it, which is why, in, I guess, without fields, it doesn't matter what it is. It's just using SQL or something to pull it. Um, there's an idea of labels, which is basically the name of that entity. So in the node case, that's the title. In my case, it's a name column. Um, and it's also possible to just not have any bundles. So if you just need the data structure and you don't need to expand on that and have other versions, you'll be perfectly fine. So I have so to illustrate entity load, I have three different functions here. I have entitlement load, which is a single one, entitlement load multiple, which is as many as you want, and entitlement load all, which is just an alias. Um, so where in Drupal 6, you would actually have to write the SQL to pull out all this information. In Drupal 7, I have, this is the entity field query. So all I have to do is tell it I want an entity type that's entitlement, and it'll return every, every, every entity of that type. There's no more you have to do. Um, you could add more conditions in here to see if it's published or not, active or not, all that other stuff. Um, but this is the easiest way to return everything you want. Um, and then this will just return the IDs. So for each one below that, all I have to do is do entity load on that one ID, and I'm set. So it's, um, 
the amount of work you have to do now, if you don't like SQL, you'll love this. Uh, it just takes all that away from you. Um, and having the static caching is really great for performance. So if, for instance, this I load for a user object and then throughout the page several times, uh, you never have to worry about performance for that. Once it's loaded once, it's loaded for good. Um, and similarly, load is just a sort of simplified version of this. It just takes one name and loads multiple and all just loads everything. So there's, in terms of the loading and actually pulling this information between entity field query and entity load, it completely abstracts all of that away from you. So even if you have a super complicated entity, you're, it doesn't really complicate your code any. So is one basically just selecting what you want to load and then you actually load it? Yeah. Yeah. So entity field query just returns the IDs, um, so that then you can decide if you actually need to load them or you just need the IDs. Um, right. Because the entity field query it just knows the entity information itself. So like the ID and label, it doesn't know the full scope of all the fields and all that stuff. So um, if you don't need all of that, it's not going to load all that for you. So this is part of where the entity API contrib module fits in, is in core you have this load functionality, but you don't have the full CRUD. Actually, you don't really have any of the CRUD. Um, so it doesn't automatically do saving or deleting or updating. Um, so those are all still done the old way of <clears throat> Drupal write record or whatever else you're using. Um, fields handle their own saving, so you don't have to worry about that. But the entity itself, you still have to manage that. So this is actually sort of a simplification of taxonomy save or taxonomy vocabulary save. Um, there's all these great mod uh, hooks now. So that in the whole process of any entity being loaded, saved, if you remember hook node API, now that basically works for all entities. So if you need to hook into users or comments or taxonomy, all of that's there now. So again, you have a common baseline for everything to work off of. So you can do that easily now. So here's an example of if you implemented your own controller using function chaining like this, um, you can add whatever methods you want for that entity type. And in my case, I'm resetting the cache because I'm saving a new one. So because of that caching, you can run into trouble if you don't automatically do this, but uh, it definitely saves you a lot of time otherwise. And delete is similar. It's, uh, in this case, it's a database query, but this is not something Entity API handles for you. So it gets you a lot of the way there, but it's not, you can't just turn that on and be done with things. Um, but you know, it's, it's certainly better in the entity field query, as I'm sure you can guess, is kind of, it makes having really large data objects with different, so, with different stores of data much easier to manipulate because you don't have to, you don't have to care what that back end looks like at all. So that's all I want to talk about with basic entities. Um, if we look at, we can look at real quick, um, the default controller, you can see it's overridden for most of the entities, um, most of the core entities, so comment, node, taxonomy, user. Um, there's a basic level of there's a basic set of functionality that's available for you, but this is very easy to add on to. So if you're familiar with object-oriented, you'll feel right at home adding to this. If not, you can get around it in other functional ways. So are there any questions? That's kind of what I want to cover. Again, I don't want to push too far into fields because it's such a big topic on its own. So 
the entities are at such a low level that there's no UI for doing it. By setting fieldable and there's some helper functions to sort of make this into a essentially what you know is like a node edit form with all those fields being attached to it, it'll facilitate that. So it, it's not like you have to manually create all those forms, but there's no way to there's no way to sort of do step one and two in the UI. No other questions? Um, related to that It would. Yeah. So. So he was asking if by adding the new view modes to an entity, if you're actually altering the original entity, and you are, you're using you use hook entity info alter, and you just plop it on the array, just like a form alter or anything like that. Um, like I mentioned, if you go to Bang Pound's GitHub page, this was a that exact piece is what he did a presentation on. <clears throat> so if you want to see a working example or at least a demo quality working example, um, that's what he provided. So you can see here. Well, this is the only real important part. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between creating a feature and creating a handle? A feature? Yeah, like there's a features module where you can put or pair things together to create a feature that you can use a print in. What's the difference between doing that or creating a bundle? So the question is how are features different than bundles? Yeah. Features are features aren't any sort of structure within Drupal. It just collects that information and saves it somewhere else. So it's not related in any way to entities or it's it's a much, much higher level. Um, it doesn't impact this process at all. It just pulls this out of the database, puts it in code. All right. Any other questions?